Uh, as Mark said, my name is Yang Dutcher. I'm a PhD student here in GMIT. And uh, I'm just going to talk to you today about a uh, practical case study on how to reduce energy use on a construction site uh, during the building project. So the outline of my presentation, I'm going to start by uh, outlining the aims and objectives of the research which I carried out, um, show a bit of context behind the research, so the reasons why we're doing this research, um, a bit about the case study and the practical examples arising from that case study, and then just finish off by talking about the conclusions. So as Mark said there, it's uh, part of a wider resource efficiency project. Uh, this is the energy part of it, but there's also um, reducing waste, reducing carbon emissions, and reducing water use on the site. So the overall objective of that PhD study is to develop a toolkit that Irish contractors can use on their sites, so to improve the resource efficiency on their own sites. So we have a number of uh, industry partners. We have BAM Construction, um, that's what I'm going to talk about today, but we also have Kerry Developments. So doing some case studies with both contractors. And it's, uh, the project is funded by the EPA through the Cleaner Greener Production Program. So the aims and objectives, identify energy reduction measures on the site. So true action research on a case study site, uh, go to the site, evaluate the current practices, uh, walk around the site, see what practices and need improvement, and then try and implement uh, some energy reduction initiatives on the site. Um, assess then whether these energy reduction initiatives actually work and how effective these initiatives are. So by uh, reviewing the information after the project has been completed, seeing what worked and taking that information forward onto the next project. And then probably the most important thing is to prove that energy management can save the contractor money. It's very hard to go to a contractor and convince them to be more sustainable or environmentally friendly, but if you can prove to them that they're going to save money by doing this, it's uh, very easy to convince someone to take part in a case study like this. So the context, the reasons behind the research. Um, we're trying to meet a target in Ireland, EU target of reducing our greenhouse gas emissions by 20% by 2020. We are one of the most energy dependent countries in the world and we import 89% of our energy. 60% of our primary energy supply is made up of oil. So maximizing energy efficiency can help. While it's not the only answer, it's definitely part of the, uh, one of the solutions to that problem and to try and meet those targets that we've been set. So this is the case study site I'm going to talk about. It's um, just over the road there in Dugishka. It was the construction of a primary school, 450 pupil primary school, and a 650 pupil secondary school. So it's part of a wider PPP scheme. It's uh, schools one and three from the government. And BAM Construction were awarded this uh, construction of eight schools on seven different sites. Um, so when they're finished, they're going to cater for 5,700 pupils in total, and work on this site has recently been completed, and both schools are now fully operational. So BAM PPP, as I said, they're going to be um, they're going to be maintaining this building and running this building for the next 25 years, and that's just some of the pictures there from the the finished project. So uh, you can see the top right construction room, bottom right is the classroom in the primary school and a PE hall in the secondary school. So the methodology behind the case study, what I actually did on the site and uh, the way we kind of went about doing things. So observe practice on site over 28 weeks. So generally I'd visit the site <coughs> twice a week, spend between one and four hours on that site, and in total visit that site 58 times. So the main thing that I did, uh, carried out an energy efficiency audit. So simply a checklist uh, by walking around the site, um, seeing what practices were poor and where we can make improvements. So if I came across areas where improvement was needed, we used what we called an observation form. So this is a standard form and it outlined when and where the problem occurred. It detailed uh, the problem and a solution to the problem. And then most importantly, there was a cost analysis put on it. So the contractor knew if they had to invest money, but they also knew the potential savings if they were to implement that. So that these forms were then used as a paper trail to inform management of the issues which were occurring on site. And then most importantly, uh, they were also developed into educational tools such as posters and toolbox talks, so that the information that I was passing to management, it could be disseminated across the project. It wasn't just uh, stopping in the site offices, so every operative on site was made aware of what we wanted to change and the solutions that we could bring to the site. Um, we tracked the energy bills using an SAI tool, which I'll show you on the next slide. 
Um, it's a free tool that you can download from the SEAI website. And uh, anyone can download this tool, it's free to use, and it's a very useful way to uh, track your energy bills, but also calculate your carbon emissions. So it'll calculate your carbon emissions by month, or it'll give you a total uh, for the 12 months of a year. So that's a screenshot there of the SAI tool. Um, that contains all our data for the energy bills for 2013. Now there are a couple of the electricity bills there at the end that haven't been input into that yet. But you can see the total cost there at the bottom, almost 58,000 euros over 12 months that we spent on energy on that site uh, between electricity and diesel costs. And then if you do the carbon emissions calculation, you're looking at 209 tons of carbon emissions. So you can see there's both environmental reasons to try and reduce your energy bill, but also there's financial gain to be made as well. So to put that 209 tonnes of CO2 into perspective, it's equal to the emissions of 43.6 passenger cars, the emissions for, uh, for a whole year, or sending 78 tonnes of waste to landfill. Then in everyday terms, 107,000 litres of petrol, uh, 487 barrels of oil, it could power 10 and a half homes for an entire year, or 28 homes electricity used for a whole year, and also equal to 8,721 gas cylinders that you use for your barbecue. So huge amount of carbon emissions. And if you want to try and sequester that 209 tons, you're looking at growing 5,367 tree seedlings for 10 years, or alternatively, you're going to need 172 acres of forest. So huge costs, um, both environmentally and monetary costs. So I'm just going to talk to you now about uh, some practical examples that we Im implemented on the site. Um, so reducing the usage of the heaters, both in the drying room and in the site offices, we reduced the usage by just one hour per day. Um, so that saved us 572 euros for a year and just over three tons of CO2 emissions. Something very simple uh, to do, but gives you immediate savings. The festoon lighting uh, across the site was one of our biggest problems. Um, very poorly set out, you can see on the right, far too many bulbs in one area, or on the left. During the day, there was enough um, natural light where the bulbs aren't actually needed or you could reduce the amount in that area. Uh, so by simply reducing the amount of that lighting, uh, setting it out better and reducing the running time, we saved 925 euros over the course of the 12 months and almost five tons of CO2 emissions. Uh, nighttime electricity usage. When I started on the site, the first electricity bill that we got, uh, we were using 50% of our electricity at night despite no work taking place on the site. So the biggest problem again was the lighting. Uh, it was just being left on at night. There was no system in place to switch it off. There was no one in charge of turning it off. Um, so we put a system in place and then basically just switched off the lights at night. And that saves 5,279 5, euros and 28 tons of CO2 emissions. Now we didn't turn off the security lighting outside, obviously it was just the interior lights <coughs> of the building. Uh, these transfer boxes, we had over 20 of these transfer boxes across the site. And the estimates range from 5 to 10% that they use uh, their electricity even when they're just plugged in. When they're not being used, they're still generating electricity. So by turning off these transfer boxes, either in areas where there was no work uh, going on, again, nighttime, um, weekends, holidays, that kind of stuff, another 4,200 euros and 22 tons of CO2 emissions. So again, something very simple to do, very easy to implement on site. Uh, idling machinery was another huge problem on site. So a huge diesel cost. On the left there, you can see the digger driver, he's waiting for the truck to come back, but he's just sitting in the machine, he's not doing anything. On the right, uh, the dumper, it was often left idling if someone went on the brake or if they're on the phone, or sometimes someone would be using two machines, but they'd leave the other machine running while they were using the digger. Um, so reducing our diesel cost with just 5%, you can save two and a half grand a year and almost eight tons of CO2 emissions. So what we're doing on this site now is we're installing technology into all the machines to track the idle times of the vehicles. So we're going to have an exact breakdown of how much idling time the machines are having on site and then try and reduce that. The generator for the crane, this is probably one of the more sort of controversial things that we implement on the site, but trying to reduce that 300 kVA generator, the usage of that by two hours a day. So Simply, it runs from eight to six every day. So we're trying to condense that down to between nine and five. Um, obviously, you wouldn't do this if there was a busy day, if there was lots of concrete being poured or power core was being delivered. 
But we had a lot of days where the crane was idle for a couple of hours in the middle of the day. So by condensing that working time, you're saving a lot of money. You're saving 7,395 euros and almost 28 tonnes of CO2 emissions. Uh, in the site offices, turning off computers, laptops, the photocopier, uh, the plotter each night, not putting them on sleep. Um, requires no cost input, we just had to put someone in charge of that. Uh, the total savings, almost 600 euros and just over three tonnes of CO2 emissions. So your total possible savings, almost 20, 21 and a half thousand euros and nearly 97 tonnes of CO2 emissions. So a reduction of 37%. Now that 37% is probably a best practice or a good practice figure. So we'd be probably looking at 20 to 25% um, realistically. So to put that 97 tonnes into context, it's 20 passenger vehicle emissions for a whole year, uh, 41,000 litres of petrol, or to power 13.3 homes electricity use for an entire year. Um, so the SAI have carried out a number of case studies in different areas. Um, they haven't done any in the construction sector. So as I said, 37% saving, but more likely to be between 20 and 25. So the SAI found that half of all Irish companies have taken action to improve their energy efficiency in the last three years, but only one third of these actions actually required um, a capital spend. So same as what I'm trying to uh, suggest here, low cost, no cost, uh, quick win options for the industry. And they found that the average saving is 12%. And in three examples that they gave, a shopping centre in Shum reduced their energy use by 30%. A golf club in Kildare saved 10% in just three months, and a Montessori in Galway saved 18%. So as part of the work on site, we also held an energy awareness campaign, again, to disseminate the information across the site and try and make all site operatives aware of what we were trying to achieve. So Energy Awareness Month, we held it in September, and we used stickers, posters, leaflets, toolbox talks, and emails to raise awareness on site. So you can see there uh, stickers and posters on different items in the canteen. And, uh, but we also, not just uh, highlighting the issues on site, we also came up with education material on how they could reduce their energy at home. So they can take that information home and hopefully save money on their own electricity bills as well. So the implementation on site um, wasn't always positive. So you can see here, this is the kind of uh, way things went. At the start of the research, everyone was really happy, really excited, um, and they were very keen to implement initiatives on site. So we very quickly got up to a good practice level. Then, over the course of maybe a month or so, interest would start uh, sliding off until the energy bill arrived on site. And then everyone would be back to implement initiatives, back to trying to get good practice, and we'd inevitably uh, reach that good practice again. And then interest reduces again. So. What we're trying to do now is get up to good practice, but the hardest part is actually staying there. So trying to implement these things and making them part of everyday occurrences on site. So the conclusions of the research, uh, as I said earlier, all possible solutions listed, they're no cost, low cost, quick win options. So once you implement them, you're going to be generating savings almost immediately on the site. Energy reduction is easily achievable and cost savings can be made in many areas of energy usage. And in this post Celtic Tiger, post boom, and hopefully post recession era, we need to ensure that when the construction industry does uh, have some economic growth again, that we're ready to develop this area of the economy as a sustainable sector. And maximizing the construction industry energy efficiency is a good option for reducing our greenhouse gas emissions. And you can see that from the one case study, we reduced the gas emissions by 97 tons. So further research on this, uh, we're taking all the positives from this, all the things that worked on site, and we're bringing them forward onto five other large case study sites, um, both with BAM construction and with Kerry developments. And if anyone here uh, is from the construction industry and they want to avail of a free energy audit, I, come and talk to me afterwards or I'll put up my contact details in a minute. Um, so we'll come to your site, have a look around, and hopefully implement some things and save you money as well. So I want to thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please ask me now, or I'll try and please use the contact details provided.